What's up, guys? I'm nobody special. We're now three days into this ridiculous sell-off that started on Black Friday with the news of the Omicron variant, or as I call it, the oil variant. And in my opinion, this sell-off, particularly in energy, is so ridiculously overdone that today I did something I almost never do. I took a stab at catching a falling knife. Pun intended. Today I dip my toes in energy markets because besides the fact that the supply and demand fundamentals are way out of balance globally right now, there's also geopolitical risk going on that I think energy stocks are a no-brainer here. You ready? Hit it. Thank you for joining me. I'm Jack Gamble and I'm nobody special. We're now three trading days deep into this sell-off that started on Black Friday with news of the Omicron variant or the oil variant as I've been calling it. And I think this sell-off is way, way overblown. Markets are treating this like it's March 2020 all over again, even though we know next to nothing about this particular variant. But in particular, energy markets have so ridiculously overreacted to this story. And considering the supply and demand fundamentals in the energy markets right now, as we head into winter, and the geopolitical risk that's centered around energy, I think this sell-off is just way overdone. And today I did a little bit of buying in the energy space, and we're going to get into why and what I bought today. Now, before I get into this, folks, I have to ask, could you please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. It really helps me out. It helps me to keep this channel growing, and I'd be forever in your debt. And I also have to see why my A here and say that I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I want you to do your own research and your own DD and arrive at a decision that's right for you based on your unique situation. Now with that, let's shrink my big fat melon of a head and get into the stories today. First, a little bit of the news that's going on. And this sell-off, folks, is just ridiculous. Keep in mind, oil dumped over $10 a barrel on Friday, recovered a little bit yesterday. But here we are today. U.S. oil prices slump over 5% on vaccine efficacy worries. Keep in mind, this is not factual. We know almost nothing about this. Oil prices slumped 5% just on worries. And what is the saying? When others are fearful, we get greedy. I just want to read a little bit into this story. Oil prices drop in November by the most since March of 2020. And there we go. People are acting like it's the very beginning of the pandemic. It is not, folks. We're almost two years into this thing. And of course, that news was only made worse today when Jay Powell testifying in front of Congress mentioned that they may look at accelerating their bond buying taper at their next meeting. Of course, that sent stocks tumbling. Now, reading into the article, oil prices tumbled on Tuesday with the U.S. crude futures falling by more than 5% after Moderna's chief cast doubt on the efficacy of the COVID-19 vaccine against the Omicron coronavirus variant spooking financial markets and heightening worries about oil demand. The head of drug maker Moderna told Financial Times that COVID-19 vaccines are unlikely to be effective against the Omicron variant of the coronavirus as they have been against the Delta variant. Now, I just want to emphasize this article is merely talking about worries, about fears. There is nothing factual in here. There have not been any studies. There is no actual data. We only have known about this variant for a couple of days, and we're acting like it's the beginning of this whole CF all over again. This is so ridiculously overdone. Which brings me to the next story that I want to talk about. OPEC postpones technical meetings to evaluate Omicron impact. This is in Reuters dated two days ago. OPEC and its allies have postponed technical meetings to later this week, giving themselves more time to assess the impact of the new Omicron coronavirus variant on oil demand and prices, according to OPEC plus sources and documents. Oil prices crashed together with official financial markets on Friday with more than 10%, their largest one-day sell-off since April of 2020, as the new variant spooked investors and added to concern that a supply surplus could swell in the first quarter. Friday's fall was exacerbated by low liquidity due to a U.S. public holiday. Before Friday, OPEC had already predicted the surplus would grow steeply after the United States and other major consumers decided to release oil stocks to help cool down prices. OPEC and allies known as OPEC Plus have moved their joint technical committee to Wednesday from Monday, according to documents. OPEC would hold a meeting the same day. A joint ministerial monitoring committee will meet on Thursday instead of Tuesday, the document shows. OPEC Plus will also meet the same day when a policy decision will likely be announced. We need more time to understand what this new variant is and if we need to overreact or not, an OPEC Plus source has said. Now, that is interesting because what this means is that OPEC is digesting this news of the variant and this news of the recent release of 
oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. And they are thinking about cutting back on some of their production increases, which means we could see more supply side limitations coming in the not too distant future. So what OPEC is doing in delaying this meeting, and this goes along with some of the things they've said recently about the Strategic Petroleum Reserve releases from the United States and other countries, OPEC is looking at these price declines and these moves to lower oil prices in the West, and they're threatening to take action to increase prices by limiting supply. So OPEC could put some upward pressure on prices over the next few days. Now, natural gas has not fared much better in these last couple of days. And here is CNBC today. U.S. natural gas sinks on track for worst month in three years. U.S. natural gas futures slid Tuesday to the lowest level in nearly three months as warmer than expected winter forecasts sent prices tumbling. The contract for January delivery fell as much as 7% to trade at 451 per million British thermal units or MMBTUs, a price last seen on September 1st. The weakness builds on Monday's drop, which saw the contract settle 11.37% lower at 485 per MBTU. The weather outlook for the core heating demand months of the winter, December, January, and February, suggests higher than normal temperatures in the U.S. demand centers, said David Givens, head of gas and power services for North America at Argus Media. This is purely a weather-driven downturn. Forecasts currently indicate average to above average temperatures across the U.S. That in turn has reduced the expected number of heating degree days weighing heavily on Henry Hub prices, added Campbell Faulkner, Senior Vice President and Chief Data Analyst at OTC Global Holdings. Okay, so what's going on here is this big sell-off in natural gas is being driven purely by the weather. Well, weather does change from time to time, doesn't it? And right now, with this big sell-off that we've seen in natural gas over the last few days, we are pricing in a very warm winter. Well, that could change on a dime any minute. Winter hasn't even started, folks. We're still in fall, and they're pricing for a warm winter right now. So if the weather changes, natural gas prices are going higher. Now, the U.S. side of natural gas is only one part of the demand part of the equation. We've also got the European markets, and the European markets are going crazy right now. And Let's put me down here so you guys can see. European gas prices surge above 100 euros with eyes on Russia. Europe's benchmark natural gas price rose above 100 euros or $190 per barrel of oil equivalent ahead of a series of auctions for pipeline capacity that are seen as a test of Russia's willingness to ease a supply crunch. Right, that is $190 per BOE or barrel of oil equivalent. Keep in mind, in the U.S., prices are in the high 20s, low 30s right now, barrel of oil equivalent. So we are seeing a major, major arbitrage developing between U.S. and European energy prices. And if you've been following my channel, you know I've talked a lot about ticker symbol LNG or Chenier Energy, which is the liquefied natural gas exporter who buys natural gas in the United States. They super cool it, they ship it across the pond to Europe, and they sell it into those higher price markets over there. So this growing arbitrage as U.S. prices come down and European prices go up means more earnings for Chenier Energy. Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Now, reading on in the article, the day ahead auctions for space on Ukrainian pipelines and capacity at German's Malnow compressor station will provide a strong signal for how serious Russia is about increasing flows to the West. While the region's biggest supplier has said it aims to keep refilling European storage sites until the end of December, it hasn't used short-term auctions to ship more fuel. Tuesday's auction for delivery on December 1st will set the tone for the month, said Tom marzak Manzer, an analyst for European Gas and LNG at ICIS. These day-ahead capacity auctions will, of course, be watched intently by the market for any signal concerning flows from Russia. Gas storage sites in Europe are depleting quickly, with levels falling more than 10% since the start of the month. Stores are now 70% full, far below the 10-year average of 85% for this time of year, according to data from Gas Infrastructure Europe. German power for December jumped as much as 20% to 241 euros a megawatt hour, while the French equivalent surged 21% to a record 384 euros on European Energy Exchange AG. Surging energy prices have boosted inflation and taken their toll on the energy industry across the globe, with retail companies from the UK to Singapore falling into bankruptcy and some of the continent's top energy companies curbing trading in the face of high volatility. Gas exporters, on the other hand, have been able to capture record profits. Now, what they're talking about here with the energy companies going bankrupt, these are retail energy companies that buy wholesale and sell to customers, and they have price caps that are put on them by the government. And when their input costs go up, but they're not allowed to raise their retail prices to their customers, they go bankrupt. 
And that's happening all over the place in the UK right now. Why? Because price controls don't work. They lead to shortages and they drive people out of business. And we're seeing that in the UK energy markets right now. So all the attention seems to be on Russia and will they increase natural gas flows into Western Europe in time for winter? And according to this news, that is not looking so good. Putin hits back as NATO warns Moscow against attacking the Ukraine. Russia would pay a high price for any new military aggression against the Ukraine, NATO and the United States warned on Tuesday as the Western Military Alliance met to discuss Moscow's possible motives for massing troops near the Ukrainian border. President Vladimir Putin countered that Russia would be forced to act if U.S.-led NATO placed missiles in Ukraine that could strike Moscow within minutes. Ukraine, a former Soviet republic that now aspires to join the European Union and NATO, has become the main flashpoint between Russia and the West, as relations have soured and to their worst level in the three decades since the Cold War ended. There will be a high price to pay for Russia if they once again use force against the independence of the nation Ukraine, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg told reporters. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken echoed Stoltenberg, saying any escalatory actions by Russia would be of great concern to the United States and any renewed aggression would trigger serious consequences. Tensions have been rising for weeks, with Russia, Ukraine, and NATO all staging military exercises amid mutual recriminations over which side is the aggressor. Putin went further than previously in spelling out Russia's red lines on Ukraine, saying it would have to respond if NATO deployed advanced missile systems on its neighbor's soil. If some kind of strike systems appear on the territory of Ukraine, the flight time to Moscow will be 7 to 10 minutes, and 5 minutes in the case of a hypersonic weapon being deployed. Just imagine, the Kremlin leader said. What are we to do in such a scenario? We will have to then create something similar in relation to those who threaten us in that way. And we can do that now, he said, pointing to Russia's recent testing of a hypersonic weapon he said could fly at nine times the speed of sound. So this war of words between NATO and Russia and Russia and the Ukraine and Belarus is there on the sidelines arguing back and forth with Poland. There's a lot of geopolitical risk going on right now in Eastern Europe. And you need to keep in mind, most of that vital natural gas that flows into Europe flows straight through the Ukraine and straight through Belarus. And if Vladimir Putin suddenly decides he wants to inflict pain on Europe during winter, all he has to do is close those valves and Europe freezes. And they don't have a lot of options for making that up. If right now they're already worried about making it through winter, if that gas pipeline shuts down, then Europe freezes. So with all of these stories combined, that oil has sold off almost $15 a barrel in three days on the flimsiest of news about a variant that may or may not be more severe that hasn't spread yet, combined with U.S. natural gas prices are selling off based on making judgments about winter weather when winter hasn't even started yet, combined with Europe is already on the brink of an energy crisis, and with the geopolitical tensions going on in Eastern Europe and Vladimir Putin threatening to shut off the gas at any moment if he decides he wants to, I think the bullish case for energy right now is very powerful. And that's why I did something I don't normally do today. I tried to catch a falling knife. And we'll see if I regret that later on. Now, before we get any further into this segment, I have to reiterate that I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice. You have to do your own research and your own DD and arrive at a decision that's right for you based on your unique situation. Now, with that, what I did today was I bought March call options for ticker symbol XLE, and that is the Energy Select Spider ETF. And that ETF tracks several stocks in the energy markets. And here we are today. This ETF has sold off majorly over the last few days from around $58 all the way down to $54.50. And looking over here at some of the top holdings, about 23% ExxonMobil, 20% Chevron, and then breaking down around 4.5%, we've got ConocoPhillips, EOG Resources, Schlumberger, Marathon, Pioneer Natural Resources, Phillips 66, Kinder Morgan. All right, so this is a wide spectrum, across the board energy ETF. And I didn't want to try to pick one or two winners. I just decided to play the sector as a whole here. And looking at this chart, I just really think that this sell-off is way, way overblown. And really, if you zoom out, I mean, looking at a five-year chart or six or seven years, I mean, this downtrend that we've been in really since 2014 and the advent of ESG investing and how we have just starved the energy industry of CapEx, I think that bird comes home to roost this winter. I think when we realize just how big a mistake we've made over these last few years 
with allowing our energy infrastructure to just crumble before our eyes while we tell ourselves feel-good bedtime stories about wind and solar that aren't going to be there for us this winter. I think this trend is about to reverse, and I think energy markets are going to come back big time over the next few months. Anyways, I bought these call options in this ETF at a strike of $55, and those go out until March. So this is a really a swing trade. I think we are going to see a V-shaped recovery in this sell-off, and I think we'll resume the upward march that we were on as the global energy shortage and the inflation story continues through winter. Again, not a financial advisor, not financial advice. That's just what I did. So long story short, the market is way, way overreacting to the oil variant. We're also seeing natural gas markets overreact to a couple days of warm weather, making judgments on the whole winter based on that. And the market is paying no attention to the geopolitical risk going on in Eastern Europe right now. I think there is a tremendous bullish case for energy stocks right now. And now that I've given this sell-off a couple of days to digest, I decided to dip my toes at the end of the day today, and I bought those call options in ticker XLE. Guys, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget that notification bell. It really helps me out. It helps me to keep this channel growing. In the meantime, live small and dream big.